So this talk is, is on minimizing space the boring graphs for a pen genomics. Um, hi, Rob. And oh, by the way, it's, it's very nice to see so many familiar uh, names in the audience. I appreciate that. And so today, um, I'll start by mentioning that maybe you've seen this talk before because it was presented by uh, Barish Akim at Recon 2021. Uh, that was a bit less than six months ago. And the diff with today is that we we'll talk much more on, about pan genomics uh, aspects. And maybe also you've seen the talk on pan genome biohacking, but the diff with this version is that we'll talk more on minimizers, which I believe could be interesting to the compression and computation audience and some uh, philosophical consideration on chemers and pen genomics towards the middle end of this talk. So um, starting with uh, two applications, one is long read genome assembly of um, mostly by bio hi fi data. So because the landscape as it stands nowadays is uh, nanopore and like bio CLR still have pretty high error rates between five and 10, 12 percent, even though nanopore is promising to release long reads with less than 1% error rate in the latest chemistry. I don't believe the data is publicly available uh, yet, or even not much widely. So currently, the low error rate long reads are mainly high fi And I believe they are pretty short in, in the long read aspects because they are limited to 25 kVs. So faced with the situation, um, classical De Bruyne graphs using uh, chemers of aspects, for instance, are not applicable to high fi because of the simple explanation. There is no way to get long error-free chemers when you have 1% error rate. So instead, uh, assemblers have been working around this problem by going back to the overlap graph paradigm with uh, quite a bit of success. Um, using fuzzy or sparse De Bruyne graphs, which are modifications of the classic De Bruyne graphs. Uh, a very recent development is LGA, which was also mentioned by Lina in, in her previous talk. And for all of these efforts, there's still a challenge that they don't scale so well. Uh, memory usage is high and the same time is relatively slow. Another application that's related but not assembly, it's bacterial pan genomics. So in, in, this, in this situation, you want to represent and perform sequence search inside collections of fully assembled genome already and many of them, so hundreds of thousands. For doing this, there has been quite a bit of literature already, most of it based on chemical indices, for instance, very by force, metagraph, reindeer, a very recent SSH, uh, and we've reviewed uh, many of these methods in papers and footnotes. And a quite different approach has been doing sketching um, using Milhash, <laughs> for instance, uh, SourMath. Uh, I should have mentioned more of these tools, for instance, Dashing and um, Bin Dash and a few others, uh, but I might be forgetting. So the goal here is not exactly to have a a full chemical index, but still to be able to perform sequence search in large, co large collections at a lower resolution. I'll come back later to what I mean by resolution, but it's pretty intuitive. Uh, and finally, in, in this situation, one might wonder, is it possible to construct pan genome graphs of such large bacterial collections or in general, large genome collections? And of course, there are some challenges with that. So. Um, for instance, the input can be very large for if you have lots of bacteria when you have terabyte size input. And so that, that makes construction of a graph challenging. And even if you have constructed it, the visualization is also an issue because of the number of nodes, edges, and I'm not even talking about the analysis of such a graph because if you cannot visualize it, then um, uh, all, of, all of the other analysis on, on it are becoming challenging by default. So in this talk, I'm talking about a method that will be able to achieve uh, pan-genome graphs of bacterial collections quite cheaply through controlled uh, information loss. So that's the MDVG uh, thing. So it's, it's essentially highly scalable the point graphs using minimizers. Um, we, we published it in Recom 2021 with my collaborators Barish Hakim and Bonnie Berger. 
and it's also now available in cell systems as, as a journal version. I'll start with some preliminaries, which I believe are super classical for the bioinformatics people, but maybe less so for uh, theorists. So in a situation where you have a reference genome, but you don't know it, you only know the reads, which are substrings of this genome, what you can do is extract all the chemists, which are substrings of LFK within the reads, and construct uh, the brain graph, which is um, a, a direct graph with nodes being all the chemists and edges being all the exact overlaps of chemists one in the chemists. And I will refer to this situation as a base space because we consider it chemicals are over the alphabet of ACTG of the basis. Another preliminary is the concept of minimizers. I'm introducing here some uh, little bit exotic concepts which are not uh, widely adopted in the literature, but I like to think about minimizers in two categories. One is the one that is historically what we call minimizers, is window minimizers. If you have a sequence, um, your minimizer is the smallest element for a certain parameter L within uh, a window, which is also which also has a parameter of size of the window. So, for instance, in this sequence, um, ATGAC and so on, consider the first window of a certain size, then the smallest element is AA. Then you can shift this window by one position to the right, and the next uh, smallest element lithographically in this situation is AC. Shift again, the next smallest element lithographically is again AC. So you get you can extract minimizers this way. It's been a very powerful and widely adopted method in bioinformatics in recent five to ten years. And um, orthogonal to this, there's another way you can think of minimizers is when you do something similar to minhash. So you can fix a set of elements that you might dis that you might have constructed by saying, I'm taking all the elements with low half values for a certain hash function. And now this set is fixed. It doesn't depend on any window. And what you can do is, is pass your sequence from the left to the right. And every time you see an Elmer in your set, you say, I have found a minimizer. So in this example, my set of minimizers are GH, CC, and TC. It's arbitrarily determined. For instance, this free sequence might have low hash. And in this longer sequence, then the two minimizers are GA and TC. And I refer to this concept as universe minimizers. There has been some Twitter discussion by informatic world where uh, universe minimizers are also called many different names. One of them is scaled min hash. So I won't clarify that it's the same thing. Um, uh, before moving on, so um, in the rest of this talk, I will present results using universe minimizers, but in principle, you can switch to minimizer definition and still obtain similar results, and I will mention that later. Um, a slide that, had, that wasn't presented at Recom is a little bit of the history, how we came up with MDBG. So there has been previous work which kind of touch on the elephant that is MDBG through different um, parts of its body. So, one of the work is Shasta, which is a genome assembler published in 2020, sorry. And the main idea of this assembler, at least one of the ideas that I like from it, is that it transforms reads into lists of millimeters. But they uh, don't consider the point parts. Another assembler, Peregrine uh, from Jason Chen, has the idea of indexing pairs of millimeters. But then again, they don't, they don't consider the point parts. And finally, WTDBG2, um, has, I think it has been renamed now into uh, Redby, is another assembler which had a brilliant idea of changing the alphabet. So instead of constructing the green graph on, in, in base space, they zoom out and consider groups of nucleotides of length 256. And then they construct came as over this new extended alphabet. So it's a great idea, but I didn't consider minimizers. So if, you, if you're aware of all of these tools and if you think uh, hard and long about what you could do with it, then you, it was possible to end up with MDBG. But I, I just acknowledge it instead of the art here. Yeah. Um, so our approach is to now do a alphabet change, which seems to be a theme 
recurrent within this workshop because previous talks uh, in this morning also mentioned it. Uh, now our alphabet is going to be an alphabet of minimizers, which is in contrast with classical DNA alphabet where uh, sigma is just a CTG and a KMR is over C. In the minimizer alphabet, then um, um, sigma to the power of parameter L is your alphabet where each character is a minimizer of length L. In shorthand, I'm saying that the first character is M1, M2, M3, and so on. So to be concrete, if you set L to two, and have to give an example, M1 could be AA, M2 could be AC, M3, AG, and so on. And then the K-minor, I'm using this, we're using this term in order to differentiate between classical base base schemas, is um, three different characters. A succession of three characters, for instance, M1, M3, M2. And that's a camera over sigma to the power of L. So I hope so far so good. And once you just change this alphabet, then it's pretty much straightforward to end up with MDVGs because now you can think in minimize the space and extract minimizers from reads and then extract k minors over minimizers, which are k, k minors. And I'm using k prime here just to say that you don't have to use the same k value as the point maps. In fact, k prime is typically a smaller value than usual case. And then MDDG is a de Bruyne graph over the minimizer alphabet, where nodes are k minors and edges are exact overlaps between k minus one minimizers. So um, doing this is, is, is okay, but now we, were, we really care about how well it will work in practice. And one aspect is that sequencing errors in, for instance, high fire rates, they propagate to minimize the space in a pretty dramatic way. So when you have a, a read with a few minimizers, which I denote by original sequence here, top left, if you introduce a sequencing error, changing this G into a C, it might have no effect in minimizer space just because um, there is no change in the minimizer or the resulting sequence. However, if you decide, if the sequencing error, if you are lucky, the G becomes an A, then this substitution in base space corresponds to an insert and minimizer space because the minimizer M3 appears. It's virtue of, of the JC, AG, sorry, is not here, is now here. All right, so a different type of sequencing error from A here modified into a G introduces a deletion and two is no longer found. So what we observe, and it can be proven, the error rate in base space is typically much smaller than the error rate you get in minimizer space. And in practice, when you have a 5% base pair error rate, it corresponds to a 50% error rate in minimizer space in our tests um, by fixing reasonable values of uh, K, L, and uh, the density of your minimizer schemes. And 50% error rate is, is, is pretty dramatic, so we couldn't really work with this. I don't know if you can see the bottom of my screen very well, I'm moving my zoom objects around. So um, we implemented, and, and I should give full credit to Barish for doing this, implemented error correction in minimizer space partial order alignment, uh, which is an equivalent to the base space POA that has been used for performing error correction of long reads for a long time. And by, by doing this, we can um, reduce the error rate in minimizer space and I'm not going to show much more about this particular aspect, but we could handle reads up to 4% base pair error rate. Higher than this, for instance, 5% base pair error rate is, is too much and hard to correct. We couldn't find a way to correct it. Um, all right, so giving an overview of the assembly pipeline following this idea, it's pretty much a classical assembly pipeline if you've seen one before, given our reads, we convert them into minimizer space, extracting minimizers, construct the NDVG, simplify the NDVG in the same way that all the bone graph assemblers proceed by removing errors and variations, and then convert back into base space to output context. And we're quite pleased with the fact that our implementation in Rust managed to achieve a very fast and very efficient assembly of the human genome of uh, 50x coverage of PyBioHiFi. 
at a quality that is comparable but not state of the art. So we get uh, 10 megabases and 50s, pretty high gene fraction. HiFi SM still achieves better results than us uh, with higher NG50s and higher G actually smaller gene, smaller gene fraction here. But I guess our key selling point here is this speed in memory. And I just wanted to also show what the human HiFi graph looks like. I don't think it's, it's the first time we show it in the conference. And it's surprisingly clean for, for an automated assembly graph, which hasn't been polished by hand at all. And so a few observations, chromosomes are not separated. It would have been nice if they were, but it's not the case. Um, assuming there are some repeated regions which are common between chromosomes, for instance, maybe let's say centromeres and others which confuse the analysis. Um, there are some um, problematic clusters of nodes which appear to be either biological or uh, artifactual due to, uh, uh, to minimizers. I haven't investigated that. But that said, if you wanted to make a state-of-the-art MDVG assemblers, the first step would be to look into this graph very closely and try to resolve all of the ambiguities in it and also try to separate chromosomes. We haven't done that yet. I'll move on to a couple of implementation details for the hardcore bioinformatics people who are here. We perform graph simplifications using GFA tools from Hangley. We have an automatic parameter estimation that works, but not the best. By setting a to 12 density to an experimentally determined value of uh, 3, 10 to the power minus 3, and k as a reasonable k value that is such that the k minimals are pretty much the length of your reads, but not, not quite the length, but a little bit less. So three third of the average read length and the density. So that's you have long, long k minimals. That's what we want. But not longer than reads, because otherwise we couldn't transfer to graph at all. And if you don't trust your our automatic parameter setting, if you shouldn't, then we also have a multi-case script similar to split. Anyway, the code is in GitHub. And the state of the software is pretty much um, prototype plus plus. So we don't claim to have a production ready assembler, but we still have a reasonable results for most of our tests. So and if I still have some time, I would like to talk a bit, a bit about our stuff. So that, that's pretty much new from now on. Some considerations about minimizers. So we used universe minimizers computed using the very front end hash library that some of you already know. If you don't, then it's a very nice way to compute hashes from sequences. We are aware of other minimizer schemes such as SyncMerf. Um, so universe minimizers with some, sort, with some window guarantee. And Stromers from Christopher, which we didn't test in NDVG, but uh, we are here too, and LCP, uh, locally consistent parsing that was talked about in, in uh, two talks ago. Um, which was implemented in, in the journal version of our paper. We tested LCP. I'll talk in the next slide about SyncMers, but I want to mention an interesting insight from Barish is that actually what we want for MDPGs is something closer to MCAS from WinOMap2, which are minimally, um, actually it's minimal. So anyway, it's conf confidently alignable substrings. It's a substring that you can align confidently. In a way, you, you, you don't want really to have minimizers that are too repeated across your genomes. You want them to be pretty much unique so that your k-minimers are unique to the region. And that conflicts with the goal of some of the minimizer schemes that want to aggregate together sequences which are homologous. Here, we actually want to separate sequences that are homologous. So there is possi possibly some exploration that could be done to improve MDBG family tools and general uh, minimizer-based assemblies if design a minimizer scheme that kind of goes against what other minimizers aim to achieve. And that's the state of our reflection is that we haven't done any work in particular for this yet. I'll mention a difference between density minimizers, actually I should have written universe minimizers here, and SyncMers. So recently I 
tested individually with SyncMOS to see whether it would improve assembly. And closely, at this table, you would notice that it doesn't seem to improve assembly too much. In fact, you have pretty much the same assembly quality, despite using a radically different minimizer scheme. So um, here I'm reporting the best assembly results out of parameter search. Both schemes use the same hash function, to be fair. And so we use dense don't sample sync modes because if you just use classical sync modes, you would have too many of them. And uh, it would, wouldn't be efficient at all for assembly. So the dense sample sync modes we use is a window guarantee, but that can be an issue. But unfortunately, I don't know how to keep a, a window guarantee for non-dense sample sync modes that are amenable to MDBG. That would get us to a, to a rabbit hole of discussion, so I will skip here. Um, I will skip this slide as well because it's about metagenome assembly and essentially reporting here that we achieved super fast metagenome assembly with reasonable genome coverage compared to HIFA ASR. Um, given the time I have left, I will talk about this slide because it's one of the highlights of our paper. We were able to construct an MDBG for for uh, 600,000 bacterial genomes. And the data as input is from uh, Zabit Bas lab. Some of you I know have been exploring this data as well. So it's, it's pretty massive. It's a three terabyte faster file of uh, lots of genomes. And when you run MDBG on it, you get a graph with uh, 700,000 connected components. It's totally impossible to visualize. So the only way I could managed to show you a picture here is by taking the largest five connected components. And we annotated them by the uh, genes we contain. So we notice, for instance, Salmonella is, is a nicely circular bacterial genome with lots of variations. Some of the genomes are non-circular, so you get uh, more, more of a line with lots of variations in it. And if you wonder what E. coli is, it's in multiple connected components due to um, the fact that uh, the E. coli genomes are numerous, but sufficiently different between each other to not aggregate into a single connected component with our MDBG, in particular with these parameters. I'll skip this one because it's an application with uh, antimicrobial resistance queries. I will skip this one also because it's some behind the scenes, but the slides, for, this slide is on my web page, for instance. Um, some frequently asked questions on MDBGs they are not applied applicable to short fluids, as far as I can tell, because short fluids are too short. And improving L50 for assembly will probably be done by doing better graph simplifications. The so ones we used are, are basic. And for nanopore data, 5% error rate is too much for MDBG, but once they achieve 1% error rate, then we will definitely be able to use because everyone will be able to use them the same as HiFi. If I have time, I'm, I'm happy to talk for a couple of minutes on more philosophical discussion on time genomes. Uh, I think it's two more slides. Yeah, yeah sounds good. OK, great. So uh, the, field is, the field of bioinfo is moving towards bigger and bigger time genomes. And the community is exploring many directions. One is sketching, with math and SORMASH. And you can see sketching as a low resolution search. By low resolution, I mean that you can only search long sequences, so entire genomes. Maybe uh, genes, but or viruses, but no, nothing small, not a camera. Another family of tools and approaches are those which consider all nucleotides, either approximately using using filters such as BIC-C and for the SBT, or exactly such as constructing compacted debris graph with the super crippled fish tool method recently recent released. Uh, metagraph using cameras, VG and minigraph using variation graphs and, va and variants. And you can see those methods are considered in high resolution because they are nucleotide precise yes. and you can construct a graph from them. What you cannot do with sketches, sketches don't allow you to run graphs. However, they're expensive to store. Um, what we propose here is pretty much an in between solution with NDBG because it's low resolution, because we use minimizers, we discard most of the nucleotides. But in the end, we still have a graph. And it's inexpensive to store and, and process. I'm not aware of any other in-between method, but if you are happy to, to hear about it. 
The fourth category is the one that biologists actually use. So one of the nice things of being at Institute Pasteur is that I'm in contact with groups which actually do pan genomics in, from a biology perspective, and they really care about genes. So the unit, the alphabet for them is the gene. They don't care about nucleotides that much yet. It's a really low resolution. You sometimes use graphs of genes. It's inexpensive to store, but that's the state of what biology groups are really doing these days in terms of pangenomics. I'll, I'll leave you with some open questions that have been bugging me recently. Um, if you have any answer for one of those questions, please let me know. Can one represent all life 31 mass? Do we saturate the space of 31 mass with life? If, if we don't, then can one represent all life 31 mass of two edit mutations that would reduce the space quite, quite a bit and still be searchable? Uh, if you cannot do that, then can you represent all life k minus for you know, the parameters? And if you still cannot do that, is it possible to represent all prokaryotic, so bacterial and viral, archaeal, 31 mass known to date? Maybe this seems to be an achievable goal nowadays, especially given um, methods that can do compatible the ring graph over the large collection of bacteria. And if you still cannot do that, can you represent all pangenomic human 31 mass? I don't even know the answer to this question myself. I suspect it's a yes. All right, so I, I conclude here. So thanks for your attention. The MDDGs were, I'll, I'll just keep to the main idea. It's essentially cameras of our sequence of minimizer characters. And I'll leave you with some potential uh, future directions 